What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the newest version of Blender, version 3.3. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as always, you can download Blender 3.3 by going to blender.org and you can download it for free. So at the moment, it's on the front page right here. You can click on the download button in order to download it. There's also a button right here for what's new that's gonna talk a little bit more about what exactly is contained inside of this new version. All right, so first off, and probably the biggest new feature inside of version 3.3 is the new hair and grooming system. So this is contained inside of this new version, and it's got a number of different tools contained inside of it designed specifically to help you work with hair and grooming inside of Blender. You can open up the documentation on these new tools by clicking on these links. There's also a video from Blender I'm giving you a demo of these new features. From that demo, they also link to the Blender Studio page where you can download this example file and use it in order to test out the new hair features. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll link to all of this in the notes down below. All right, so next up, for geometry nodes, which is always improving by the way, um, they've got new nodes included for a lot of different things. One of the things they have included is the UV unwrap and pack UV islands nodes. Basically what those nodes are going to do is they're gonna allow you to procedurally adjust your uh, UV maps using those geometry nodes. Basically that means you can create things with geometry nodes and these are gonna help you properly map textures on there procedurally without having to do it manually. So just another big jump in the way that things are textured using geometry nodes and therefore in the way that we can create things in Blender. And so there's a couple other nodes that have been added. The one that I am most excited about is the shortest edge paths. So basically what this does is it tries to find a path um, the fastest or best path along edges from the different vertices inside of an object. And so you can actually download the example file from that page to see how this work, works. Basically what this does is this procedurally generates a labyrinth based on a size, and then you can randomize the labyrinth. We'll notice how you can also see the process of solving the fastest way to get to the endpoint by adjusting these sliders right here. So this basically finds the fastest way to get to that endpoint. And it's really cool because it's basically procedurally generating a maze and then also procedurally generating the solution to the maze um, using geometry nodes in Blender. And so we've already seen some really interesting things from a lot of the different geometry nodes nodes creators that we've seen on Twitter. So for example, Ben um, has some cool stuff testing out this node as well as Jesse. And so Jesse's built some stuff that we've seen on Twitter where uh, he's built something that procedurally generates a road that finds the quickest path along a terrain using geometry nodes. He's also used it to generate volumetric lightning inside of Blender um, by using that shortest path node. So lots of really interesting things going on with geometry nodes. So there's some others down here as well. So edge pads to curves and edge pads to selection, but the one I've seen the really interesting stuff on so far has been the shortest edge pads. So as always, geometry nodes is still growing and is still very exciting for Blender. So we've also got some grease pencil improvements, and every time I see the grease pencil improvements, I keep thinking that I'm going to learn how to use grease pencil, and I haven't done it yet. Um, maybe that's something we can look at in the future, but they've got some different additions in here for some really interesting things. So one, for example, is uh, it can now calculate where shadows would go based on objects. So it can kind of cast a shadow on an object from a line standpoint. There's also some other tools in here allowing you to uh, basically specify the intersection priorities. So which object has the highest priority when objects intersect, other things like that. Um, grease pencil objects now also show up in the dope sheet and timeline editors. There's some other improvements that have gone on with grease pencil as well. If you guys are interested in getting more into grease pencil on the channel, let me know. It's just not something that I've really had a chance to mess around with yet. So they've added support for a couple different additional GPUs. So the Intel Arc, as well as the AMD Vega. Um, so there's some additional functionality there if you do have those GPUs on your computer. So they've adjusted the outliner where now it's going to display overridden properties. You can see that by using a slider right here. Know how it tells you things have been added through override over here. So it's just giving you more information um, about the organization of your model. All right, so this next feature is interesting to me. The image plane marker, basically what it does is it allows you to track a portion of a video. So that's been something that's in there before. So if I'm understanding this properly, you can take this image, you can send it to an external editing software like Photoshop or whatever you use. You can adjust it and then you can bring that image back in to your tracked 
view. And so basically what that allows you to do is that allows you to take something and replace it. So you can see on this video, right, they replace the graffiti with other graffiti inside of the actual scene right here. So that's something I want to play around with a little bit because that's uh, really interesting to me how you can uh, make that edit really quickly using the image tracking in Blender. All right, so as always, there's a bunch of fixes and smaller improvements listed down below. Um, you can definitely scroll through these. I'll link to this whole page um, in the notes down below this video. But as always, tons of new features contained inside of this new version of Blender. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know which features you're most excited about in this new version. I'm always excited to see what Blender's coming out with because there's so much being done with the program. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.